encouraging us to share true ideas. What that really means is he's encouraging us to let the Holy Spirit speak through us <laughs> and smile through us and laugh through us and hug through us. That's his way of, of saying that. That, that God is, a, is spirit and the spirit is extending, ever extending. And so if we want to know ourselves as spirit, and we want to know God as God is, then we have to be in the spirit of sharing. I know in my early years when I would travel around the United States and Canada, it was so much fun not knowing how the day would unfold, but I would get to share so many things during the course of a day and, and have many people uh, just taking me into their, their house, can I give you something to eat, can I pack you a lunch, can I, can I give you some gasoline for your car, can I give you a ride? Give, 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 give. I was give, give, giving, and I was loving these reflections of giving, pouring into my awareness from every direction. Very, very different from the idea that you can own things and possess things. You know, it's like a flower giving its fragrance. It doesn't tell the wind where it's going to carry the fragment, fragrance, it just gives the fragrance and the wind will take it wherever the wind takes it. To me that's a nice symbol of the Holy Spirit. You just offer it, you, you get into the desire of giving and, and extending and sharing. So, you know, I enjoyed all the travels, that was fun, that was just an aspect of giving and then when the internet came along, I mean back in the old days we just used pay phones and dimes and all kinds of in our legs, but now we have internet technology and planes and things that I didn't really use a lot in the early years. But I got into the joy of giving it away on the internet, you know, just uploading. I was like uploading king. Just upload, upload, upload. Because the desire was to share and extend. When you come to a joyful experience, you just want to extend it. You know, it's, that's what it is. It, the very experience wants to extend. And so that was a lot of fun. And now as I watch the symbol of, of those that seem to come and, and go and go light up and go share and extend, uh, I just feel such a blessing in my heart. And you do realize that giving and receiving are the same. You feel the blessing of giving and sharing and extending. I saw it as a, a revolutionary transformation of my mind, of my consciousness, that became so full and, and so complete that all thoughts of lack, all thoughts of scarcity, truly all thoughts that there was something outside of my mind, the mind, just disappeared. And so when you're in that state of joy, of happiness and abundance, you, you see the world from that same state. You cease to see a problem. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, that's what healing is, is, is truly seeing that there's nothing to be healed. <laughs> that's the best, that's the healing. That's where, when it's an actuality, not, it's not piecemeal, it's not, oh, let's try to tackle this thing and then that thing. So, no longer are we problem solvers, we're just rejoicers, and yet, when we are talking during the day, it's like we're just talking about the call, in some form. Usually it could be around persons, it could be around a number of things, but it's the, the same content really, that's what I love about it. And we're all lit up, the eyes are sparkling, the faces are lit up with joy, because it's like being sourced with, with these true ideas and being in the river of these true ideas as they're flowing. And to me that, that in the, now has become practical. <laughs> That's a practical life. <laughs> the other stuff just all gets handled anyway, so, you know, there's nothing really to, to struggle with. Sundari, come on. 
<laughs> Come on down. Come on up. <laughs> well, um, I got inspired this morning again by the idea of shared decisions and um, had this fantasy of these, these uh, new expression session groups that have formed in my community um, of opening to group um, decision-making process. There's a few parts to this. Okay. Um, I was wondering how you thought that would fit together. But when, and then when I was thinking about that process of joint decision making, it seemed to me in my mind that the trap of it would be how to share a decision. Oh, you know, in one way I picture it wordlessly, just calling in spirit. And when we get into words, the trick of discrimination between fixing, analyzing that very line of the clarity process. And in my own beingness, I notice and noticing more and more and more that my tendency to share and be helpful and extend sometimes oozes off without my ability to discriminate or catching it after the fact into fixing. Um, it, it, and so I guess I'm asking you a few things. I'm asking you about that with respect to does it fit with expression sessions and if, if in one way or another if you have a group, how do you not fall into fixing and analyzing in terms of a decision process and just in my own beingness how to discriminate when one's falling into that pit, you know, where the joining becomes fixing or if, with the notion, the ego notion of, oh, I'll, I'm helpful. Okay, that's <laughs> exciting. I heard that question this morning. I thought, oh, wow, that's a good one. I heard the question about the, the big decisions and making that, and then you follow that up with, practically speaking, how do you do this, you know, with a group? Or with myself. Or with yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately, I see that decision-making is to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So um, that's pretty much where Kirsten's answer went with, with getting into yes, and then she did a whole song right after that, very reverent song about that. And in order to open up to the yes and open up to the Holy Spirit and have that prayer of the heart be, Holy Spirit, decide for God, for me, even though it may relate to any number of specific things that seem to be in your awareness that day, it's up for decision that that it's always very very helpful to to expose and uncover the self-concept which is really the tethers to the world the tethers to the ego that when the heart closes down or when you feel like you're you're wanting to just share and join in the decision starts to drift away it's because of some egoic investment that is there. Often, very often unconscious, that's why it's a drift. You know, like, well, well what's, what happens, how does, how does my heart close, you know, that's part of it. I, I think for me it drifts because I confuse my true worth um, with my functioning in the world rather than innate beingness. Yeah. And that's where the I'm helpful comes from but it oozes really easily, pretty with my children, but it just in even little conversations. I, and, and I can feel the tightening in another person when I ooze into that mode, mm -hmm. um, but it gets confusing to yeah, it's, discriminate. That's very discerning just to look at worth, because that's what we've been talking a lot about, worth and worthiness, because if your worth is attached to the doings, to the belonging, to something in the world, you know, to identifying, taking the I amness that you are and identifying it down with things in the world, that's where the compromise comes in. That's where the drift comes in. So when we begin to truly empty our mind of all affiliations, of all identifications, of all associations, and all familiar associations, our heart 
is able to just expand and expand and expand because we're coming back to the beingness that you described, where we have a free flow. And ultimately that's really the best for shared decisions is when when you truly empty your mind and your awareness of of those attachments, of those possessions, of those ownership kind of things where you're owning and identifying with them as this little I, then when you truly divest of that, you can easily make decisions with the Holy Spirit all through the day without any effort. It's just like it's given and it's given and it's given. It always is given, 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 but if there's an interference pattern or a filter that's that's blocking that givenness out, then the ego is going to come in with, you know, like Armel was saying, oh, let's, well, let's do something fun. Or, you know, it, the subtle distractions can come in where you're trying to, you know, make a happy day on your own, on, of your own making, meaning of your ego self-making, and that's where you, you drift away from that sense of clarity. So I know you asked the question of Kirsten, and, and even with our community, there's lots of open discussion, expression sessions, and um, we've had many, many open discussions about all types of thing, but they're all really about the call underneath. Do the, I, I was kind of curious, in your group, when you make decisions together, does it end up being more in words or, or uh, in meditation and then sharing what you get? I, I, I just wondered sort of the practicality of how does a group go about making a decision together? Or how would it typically, you know, what would it look like? Yeah, it's almost like there's an open sharing and then there's a settling into, like Kirsten called it, a feeling, where it's like, aha, it's like the heads are nodding, and you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, there's, the agreement like settles in, so the clearing is important, because there can be, you know, egoic wants and whims that will come in, but there's such an openness, like that's welcome. You know, it's, it's not like, Shh, don't do that, don't say that. You know, there's not a, a, a censoring of that. There's a real openness and welcoming first, and then there's like a settling. That's the prayer that that uh, Kirsten was talking about this morning. Pray, 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 listen, follow. And those interference patterns, you know, have to be able to come up and out. And would that work in a group like ours, where like somebody brings up a personal problem and the talking, I guess I fear, uh, my fear is that the talking part would end up being fixing, analyzing, and I, I can't, I can't, my mind, I guess, can't conceive of the modality, but maybe that's not enough, maybe it's not even a good idea, or maybe it is, or maybe there's not a way to make a joint intent if it's somebody's personal problem, or maybe there is. I, yeah. <laughs> I think it comes to mind, this, this idea of trust. You know, trust will settle every problem now, that to the depth and to the extent of this deep trust in spirit, that it becomes even more and more a reflection of that. So, like for myself, it went from being kind of like a loner many, many years ago, very much of a loner, to a series of experiences in relationship where the trust just grew deeper and deeper. As the mask came down, as there was transparency, as the sense of peace and relaxation, you know, not a sense of hiding and keeping things private and, and secret, as that all went away, then in my awareness I started to draw witnesses into my awareness of that same trust. So I guess you could say that we're on our way to a communion experience with God, but on the way, along the way, the mighty companions, or as they say in Australia, the mighty mates, that became so full and, and so complete that all thoughts of lack, all thoughts of scarcity, truly all thoughts that there was something outside of my mind, the mind, just disappeared, and so when you're in that state of joy, of happiness and abundance, you, you see the world from that same state. You cease to 
see a problem. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, that's what healing is, is, is truly seeing that there's nothing to be healed. <laughs> that's the best, that's the healing. That's where, when it's an actuality, not, it's not piecemeal, it's not, oh, let's try to tackle this thing and then that thing. So, no longer are we problem solvers, we're just rejoicers, and yet, when we are talking during the day, it's like we're just talking about the call, in some form. Usually, it could be around persons, it could be around a number of things, but it's the, the same content. It's really. really delightful too, you know, it's like, huh, okay, that's wonderful. Just the feeling of being so connected and not having to talk about it all the time. So that's kind of been a feeling with the monastery now. It's, it's quite serene and oftentimes very, very reverent and silent. And it's just the need for the words has, has fallen away. <laughs>